If you have a washing machine similar to this one, then you have a machine that's built on the Whirlpool Direct Drive plan form. It doesn't matter if it's an estate, an Amana, Kenmore, Maytag, or some other brand. It is still built with Whirlpool parts. It consists of a metal wash tub sitting inside a plastic drum that sits on a three-point pedestal. The agitator and the wash tub is, bi is driven by a bi-directional electric motor that transfers rotational movement through a direct drive transmission. I'd say that that particular transmission is the best invention that Whirlpool ever made and they put it in their washing machines that have lasted 30 years or more. Sadly, they discontinued this washing machine model. I think it, the last one was built uh, somewhere around 2009, but many are still out there and should be around for many years to come. So, so as a service technician, you are guaranteed to have to work on some of them. Now, if your washer's leaking somewhere near the center of the tub, the chances are one of three seals has failed and it, they'll ha one of them will have to be replaced or you could replace all three if you uh, are so inclined. Now these machines have an outer plastic tub that's positioned on a three-arm tub support that goes, the support goes through the first seal called the tub seal through the plastic tub. And then a spin tube that connects the metal inner basket fits through the center post of the tub support and it goes through a second water barrier called the spin tube seal. Now to drive the agitator, there's a transmission shaft that fits into the spin tube and through the third seal, which uh, is at the top and it's appropriately called the transmission shaft seal. If any one of these three seals fails, you will see the evidence as a rusty residue inside the belt of the clutch. So a small leak will often be the reason your customer complains that the washer won't spin the clothes out. Now, the leak may be small, but it's just enough to lubricate the clutch pad so that the tub uh, slips during the spin cycle. Be aware that if the washer is leaking, you should also replace the clutch because the continuous slipping caused by the leak has probably worn the clutch pads out too. And to determine which seal is leaking, you should first remove the agitator and the spin basket. So to re remove the agitator, you should use a screwdriver to pop off the top cover. There may be a, a fabric softener dispenser there too. You can pop it off. But underneath that, you'll find a 7 inch bolt that fastens the agitator to the transmission shaft. If you're lucky, the agitator should lift out easily. Sometimes a stuck agitator can be quite a cha uh, challenging and there's uh, numerous videos out there that show different methods of removing them. So we won't cover that here. And after you get the agitator out, you turn the machine on its side, remove the transmission. It's secured by three half inch bolts on the bottom of a pedestal. Uh, first, you should remove the motor and the, and the water pump, then remove the transmission. Next, you should remove the inner wash tub by using a special spanner wrench that you can find online. Or you can also take a dull cold chisel and rest it inside one of the slots on the spanner nut and uh, tapping lightly with a hammer, it should, uh, in a counterclockwise position, it should, it should loosen up so that you can remove it with your hand. Once this is removed, you'll need to lift the tub out, and it's almost always stuck tight. So uh, what I do is I invert the spanner wrench over the, the tub block, and I put the spanner nut back on just so the threads are even at the top of the block. And then I use a special puller that Mr. Harper had made years ago, and, but I'm sure a regular two-armed bearing puller will work fine too. And I've seen someone take a punch and, and lightly drive it into the slot of the block to spread it apart enough to loosen it from the spin tube and just enough to, to lift the tub out. Now that the inner tub is out, you need to determine which seal is leaking. First fill the tub above the outer tub seal, but just below the spin tube seal and look for water, uh, water drip. It's best to position the machine on a dry concrete slab or some other uh, surface that, that'll show a, a noticeable wet spot if the seal is leaking. So give yourself about 20 minutes or more to discover if there's a slow leak. If, it's, if 20 minutes should be long enough to determine if it's leaking, so you'll see it, it dripping off the, the old transmission. If the tub seal passes the test, then you continue to fill the tub to cover the spin tube seal, but just below the transmission shaft seal, then cut your water off. Now, if that seal passes, then continue filling above the transmission seal. 
And so by using this process of elimination, you can determine which seal you, you'll need to uh, change. Uh, most all the time, it's going to be the transmission shaft seal. So I went through this process on this machine and I found that the transmission shaft seal was the one that leaked and this is how I changed it. So first you're going to have to remove the old seal using a screwdriver or a pointed punch. I drove the flat head of the screwdriver between the spin tube and the metal ring that forms the base of the old seal. Uh, I'm being careful not to damage the spin tube when I did this and then I pried it out with the shaft and this is what the old seal looks like. Now to install the new seal, you first reinstall the transmission. If you try to install the new seal without the support of the transmission shaft on the inside of the seal, you will almost always damage the, the new seal. And trust me, I've been that stupid. So once you have the transmission reinstalled, you'll likely lube the inside and the outside of the seal with some grease and slide it into place over the transmission shaft. Okay, now I'm gonna slide over the shaft. So far, so good. Now to seat the new seal, I took a piece of PVC pipe that just fits over the rim of the seal and I used a file and tapered the, the edge of the PVC so that it fit down into the inside of the spin tube. And this handy little hack will save you a lot of time and it prevents you from damaging the rubber seal if you try tapping it into the spin tube with a screwdriver. I plan on getting a machinist friend of mine to fashion me a tool from a brass stock machined to the precise measurements of the seal and the inside diameter of the spin tube to replace this PVC hat. So once you've installed the seal, you want to fill the machine with water again and test your work. Now if it passes inspection, then you can reassemble the washer. If you'll look right over there, my two assistants are pointing to some other videos that you may like to see. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.